Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? Um, I've got quite a bit of backlog of uh, mm -hmm. final finds over the last uh, month or so um, that I need to, to show. So just kind of chipping away at it. I uh, don't want to make these videos too long, so I'm not going to show too many albums or, or these videos could be, you know, 30 plus minutes. Um, so I picked 10 uh, to talk about and uh, I'll show them to you guys, okay? Uh, the, they're a combination of, uh, I think they're mostly online finds, um, Discogs, Amazon, uh, primarily I would say. Uh, so the first record, uh, a really important record for me, and it doesn't have a cover and I sort of just made a printed cover, Us Three, Hand on the Torch. Um, I had this back in the early 90s on cassette and then on CD, and I really played the hell out of it. Uh, Us Three, for those of you guys that don't know, I think Steve Carlson recently showed the, the CD of this um, uh, in one of his videos that he was playing. Um, this is your combination of uh, jazz and rap, uh, where these guys, I think they're, they're based out of England, uh, mainly producers, instrumentalists, um, hooked up with some rappers, but they, the key to, to all this is they got access to the Blue Note um, record collection uh, label uh, and basically sampled that using that for the music. Uh, Flip, Flan Flip Fantasia, I think, was the most well-known track off of here. Uh, I love that combination of rap with... Um, with jazz, um, Mad Lib's done something very similar to this. I've, I've got that record. I don't have a lot of rap, but these are the ones that I tend to have. Uh, I've got that record. Uh, I also plan on getting some um, Tribe Called Quest because I think those those bands uh, do it really well. Diggable Planets. I have Blowout Comb. Um, I recently separated all my rap records, and it totaled a mammoth. Uh, collection of about six or seven records, uh, but I was super, super happy to get this. Um, this is going for some quite large money um, on Discogs. Um, if you happen to find a copy with, you know, the cover intact and everything, uh, this I got for a really cheap price. I think it was around 12 euros, uh, something like that, uh, which I was more than happy to pay without without the cover because I think the uh, the alternative to that was like I don't know 90 plus or something like that so you us three hand on the torch the wedding present peel sessions this is a four song EP um, of course the very classic uh, peel sessions um, covers that that came out uh, very distinctive uh, four songs. Uh, this was actually dated, I think, from 86 and is prior to The Wedding Present's first album, George Best, which uh, I immediately ordered off of Amazon. It was going for a really good price on there as well. After listening to this, uh, I've heard The Wedding Present be described as sort of a more noisier Smiths, and I would definitely agree to that, um, especially around this time frame, 86, 87. Um, yeah, excellent stuff. Excellent indie rock stuff. Uh, I showed in my last video uh, that I picked up Psycho Candy at the flea market, and that was my first um, Jesus and Mary Chain vinyl. Uh, but I had actually ordered this album before picking that up, and it came this week. Uh, Jesus and the Mary Chain Barbed Wire Kisses. This is a B-Sides collection um <clears throat> back around the time of Psych uh, psycho candy in the dark lands there actually is a, a a track on here called psycho candy this is excellent stuff i've always felt that the jesus and mary chain and the ramones kind of share a similar um aesthetic in the sense that um their harmonies uh are kind of rooted in sort of early 50s 60s rock and roll but uh, in the case of the Ramones, they, they uh, add that punk energy to it. In the case of Jesus and Mary Chain, they sort of fuzz it up with, um, you know, new uh, with 80s sort of new wave uh, and that kind of sound to make um, something really their own and distinct. And, uh, uh, but these songs are, are very 
hummable, uh, melodic, um, just with that edge on them, which I think is what makes them special. A white label promo for Luscious Jackson. This is called Life of Leisure. Um, white label promo, uh, <laughs> what that really means to me is uh, sometimes the, the label's completely white and no information listed on it, and which is, is the case here. No information listed on the back, but this is uh, a three song, 12 uh, inch uh, for Luscious Jackson, uh, New York based all female group. Uh, but had had some ties to the Beastie Boys. Um, their first album, I want to say, "In Search of Manny," I think it was called, uh, which I don't have, which I would love to get. There's a few tracks, and I think maybe all the tracks are from that particular album. I have their Natural Ingredients album, when uh, Luscious Jackson got some notoriety and actually appeared on. Um, Saturday Night Live back in the 90s, but really pleased to get this three song EP. I, I love the sound of this band. Another 12 inch, Depeche Mode, my favorite Depeche Mode song, Everything Counts. This is uh, the extended version called Everything Counts in Larger Amounts. So it's a two song 12 inch, but really I got this for the Everything Counts song, which um, I was disappointed when I got the Catching Up with Depeche Mode, uh, I guess Best Of Singles Collection. Uh, Everything Counts wasn't on there, and I'm not sure why. I don't know if maybe uh, that album came out before the song came out back in the 80s. But regardless, um, this is my favorite Depeche Mode song, and I got to know this song really when I met my wife back uh, in the late 80s. Um, she was heavily into Depeche Mode. That was her favorite band, and she was playing the 101 live album quite a bit and I got to know those songs really well. Before that, I wasn't really a Depeche Mode fan. So uh, I credit her for, for getting me into Depeche Mode and uh, New Order. Um, a modern day shoegaze uh, classic, in my opinion, which is back from, I think, 2004, 2005, Serena Manish. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Serena Manish is um, a shoegaze band from Norway. They sing in English. Uh, I saw these guys live uh, where the lead singer, and I can't remember his name, Emil something, uh, spent the last, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes of the show uh, just sort of lying and moving around the floor like a snake. Um, it, was, it was funny to watch, uh, nice to watch. Um, this was their debut album. They've only made two albums in total, so I think they're due for another. But this is heavily influenced by My Bloody Valentine. They wear their influences on their sleeve, and I think it's uh, a strong album for that. So Serena Manish. Can Out of Reach. This is a latter-day Can album. Um, Demo Suzuki is no longer in the band. Holger, Holger Shukai is no longer in the band, but the other three guys are. Um, they brought in some additional help. Roscoe G, I think is his name, on uh, bass. Some really funky bass lines on here. Um, and, and some other guy who also played in Traffic, his name escapes me right now, Rebo something perhaps, uh, on percussion. Uh, as if Jackie needed some help on, on percussion. But anyway, this is uh, quite groove-oriented, very funky, still very good. Not rated very highly in the uh, Can discography, but um, I sampled it before buying it. I liked what I heard. It was going for a decent price. Uh, I think this is their maybe second last album before they disbanded, but um, I'm, I'm enjoying this. An alternative classic, um, Mercury Rev, sorry, Mercury Rev, um, Your Self Is Steam. This is their debut album. This is uh, Mercury Rev with their former uh, lead vocalist, uh, Dave Baker. Um, very different Mercury Rev than the Mercury Rev that... Um, put out the, the very uh, successful album Deserter Songs in the, in the late 90s. Um, some people really draw a distinction between this early Mercury Rev and that Mercury Rev, and, and the sound is quite different. This is very uh, noisy, psychedelic. Uh, I love both uh, periods of Mercury Rev. 
Um, and so when this became available, I, I didn't waste any time getting it. I had this on CD, so I'm familiar with the album. Very noisy, very um, early. It sounds like early Flaming Lips, which makes a lot of sense because Jonathan Donahue, who's uh, the, one of the guitarists and other vocalists in, in Mercury Rev, uh, was a member of early Flaming Lips. So um, in a police-driven ambulance, which is an album that I've come to really enjoy uh, that I got from uh, Hannah from uh, VCLT. Um, excellent album. This sounds a lot like that. Um, noisy, some shoegaze elements, um, indie rock, um, classic 90s release. Uh, you guys have seen me showing a lot of Pavement, uh, they're one of my favorite bands from the 90s, and I picked up another solo album from Steve Malcolmus, Face the Truth. I think this was Steve's, I want to say, third solo album. Uh, and this is, you know, this is your typical Steve Malcolmus. Some, some fans call this uh, sort of a return to form of sorts back to the pavement sound. I think he's always sounded like pavement because he was the leader there and uh, you know, solo Malcolmist and pavement are gonna sound like each other. So um, this became available on Amazon for, for a good price. So I, I didn't waste any time in getting this. Steve Malcolmist has a, another solo album coming out this year called Traditional Techniques uh, coming out in early March and that'll be three years in a row that uh, Steve is putting out an album. And last but not least, Robert Plant, Carry Fire. Um, I've owned this on CD uh, for a couple of years. This is Robert's last, uh, most recent solo album. Um, this was always going for, I don't know, high 30s, 40s Canadian. Uh, a used copy became available for 18, so I, I jumped on it, and I, I personally see nothing wrong with this album. It's three-sided, which which I love. Um, you know, why spread the material out over four sides when you can put it on three sides? Um, <clears throat> I think that, you know, the flow of the album works much better that way. Uh, this, of course, is with his great band, uh, The Strange Sensation. Um so really pleased to get this for under 20 bucks. Okay, guys, uh, 10 albums. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.